For those of us who don't know, explain to me how this implant works and what it does. Thank you, Taylor. So a brain computer interface is a device that's implanted inside the brain that's capable of picking up signals that enable the user to control external systems. And the term brain computer interface is as it sounds. The initial application would be for computer control use that's completely hands free. Do you really see this as the future of neurological diagnosis and treatment? I think this is a industry that's emerging with the blessing of the FDA and encouragement from the FDA. It's a promise to overcome a range of problems that can affect humans all the way from their hands to muscles to nerves to the spinal cord up to the brain that overcomes all of that by linking up the brain to a device that enables them to interact with the world once again. Tom, you mentioned the FDA. Talk to me about discussions you have. I think we're looking forward to a worldwide trial, potentially FDA approval down the road. Any sense of a timeline or guidance on that? For us, we've been in discussions with the FDA for a number of years. Uh, that's involved several meetings around discussion around the clinical trial, the indication, the type of patients, uh, so that we can structure a trial that enables the FDA to give approval within a certain cohort of patients. Um, we have entered the clinical stage, um, uh, so we, we can't quite uh, talk too much about that just yet. We're sure. looking forward to doing that soon. But I can say that the FDA has been looking at this space for a number of years. BrainGate was the initial group run by Lee Hochberg that started to investigate this, and he's been a, a, a front runner with discussing around the FDA what these clinical trials should look like. So there is some history with the FDA from an investigational and academic point of view with how we should move forward, and we've really been um, you know, using that history to sort of guide us forward. Tom, what have the results from the trials shown you so far? How successful are they? I would love to be able to talk about that. I can't discuss the particulars of the trial except to say that we, we have commenced the trials and the results will be uh, coming soon. But more than that, unfortunately, uh, today I can't uh, announce too much. Well, when you come back, you will. In the meantime, talk to me about some of the reaction from colleagues, peers, the rest of the medical community. What do they say about this as well? Uh, what, I, what I've been, uh, in, uh, what has affected me is seeing the people who I've respected, who I've looked up to, make comment on the fact that to get to the point of a fully implantable system and demonstrating a mechanism to achieve that implant in a safe way is is the next step that um, has now put us into the into the next stage of this of this technology development. It's a very exciting time, and it's it's um, up to this point the technology has proven that it can be. Uh, extremely beneficial for patients in a number of ways, but the real challenge has been how do you get it into the brain safely in a way that's repeatable and, and reproducible. And Tom, how are you doing that? Uh, so our technology does not require craniotomy, so there's no opening up of the skull or traditional open brain surgery. We use the blood vessels as the natural highway to get into the brain, and we've built a system onto a stent that enables recording of local brain activity from inside a blood vessel inside the brain.